This is an exciting time to be a PC hardware enthusiast. Ryzen is right around the corner, Vega is on the way, and we are here right now at the NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti launch. NVIDIA claims this is the biggest improvement from a TI series launch ever. And that makes sense, as the 1080 and the 1080 Ti have almost nothing in common at all. They aren't based on the same GPU, they aren't running the same memory bus width. I mean, the TI even has two power connectors to the standard 1080s one. This is an exciting, but probably really expensive day. Let's run through all of the things that we know about NVIDIA's new flagship. The new Master Keys Pro M RGB and Pro S White from Cooler Master are coming soon. Check out their current lineup at the link below. First off, let's dive into the specs. As you might have expected, this card is a lot closer to the Titan XP than it is to a standard GTX 1080. But even then, it's not that close. It has the same GP102 core, and it shares the same amount of CUDA cores at 3584, the same 12 billion transistors and 224 texture units with the same TDP of 250 watts. But then the clock speed is slightly higher at 1600 megahertz for boost, and there are a few less ROPs at 88 instead of 96. There are also changes in terms of I.O. NVIDIA removed the DVI connector and replaced it with nothing. That's right, folks. NVIDIA has abandoned DVI and left the user with three display ports and one HDMI port. For your convenience, they have included a display port to DVI adapter in the box, however, so you've got that going for you, which is nice. But moving on, regardless, we've got the memory setup, which is also a little bit odd. You've got 11 gigs of GDDR5X VRAM running at 11 gigabits per second. They've accomplished this through channel optimization, equalization techniques, and having minimal noise. But that, my friends, is not the whole story for memory. They've also implemented tiled caching, which should improve cache locality and reduce memory traffic overall by better utilizing their L2 cache. Then there's the new thermal design with vapor chamber cooling and 2x the cooling area as, I'm assuming, the 1080, as they didn't actually specify. This is not the same cooler as the Titan XP, and they promise increased performance over that as well. The benchmark that they gave us put a 1080 running at higher than normal TDP and well above the standard max temperature spec NVIDIA usually sets against a 1080 Ti that was running below its TDP and again at a higher than normal temperature. So I guess we'll wait till we get it back in the office to really judge it there. They also have a new seven phase power delivery setup, which is all dual FETs, which should help it be more power efficient than all other Pascal cards in their lineup. Then it got juicy. They showed us performance numbers and they were pretty damn impressive compared to a 1080. They're claiming that it's about 35% faster when compared to other 1080 launches like 900 series and 700 series, they were 25 and 18 respectively. Also, just as a note, Founders Edition cards will be the first ones available directly from Nvidia and they will be priced right at MS. SRP. They also announced a bunch of stuff on the software side of things, but most of it is for developers like Shadowplay and Anzil having their own public SDKs so that developers can implement them into their games at will. And something called NVIDIA Aftermath that gives game developers the ability to classify GPU crashes by location and type if the user has elected to upload those files. Then there is my personal favorite, FCAT VR, which is related to standard FCAT, but obviously tuned for VR. It has runtime frames, rendered frames, and software capture indicators in three different locations on the screen. Then you just open the CSV files that it outputs in their FCAT data analyzer, and you've got a relatively easy to use and accurate way to benchmark VR, which is awesome because we have not had that until now. Squarespace, because you need to build a website and you really want 24 seven live chat and email support, and you wanna pay like somewhere around 12 bucks a month and you want to buy it for a year and when you buy it for a year you want to get a free domain included you want it to look fine on everything someone's going to view the website on a watch a tablet a phone a console a desktop whatever you want to be able to sell things through your website you want to have the potential to have one singular page that just looks wonderful all the time and you want to be able to publish your Apple News format stuff directly to Squarespace through their included module. Well, you can do all of that. Go to squarespace.com and use offer code LTT to get 10% off of your first purchase because you also wanted a discount. 
And then they flat out refuse to tell us the MSRP or when the card would be released. So we have to watch the live stream just like you guys do to get that information. And then once I have that information, we will finish up this video in terms of filming. We will import it all to the computer, edit it, render it, and upload it to YouTube.